Hello, my name is Dr John Luck. I'm one of the team of consultant anaesthetists here at the Golden Jubilee National Hospital who look after patients who are having hip and knee joint replacements. Thank you for taking the time to view this film today. We hope that you find it both interesting and informative. The aim of this film is to provide you with information relating to your journey as a patient through the hospital. We also want to provide you with some important information about the types of anaesthetic that we provide in this hospital and also about the types of pain management that you will have following your operation. After you have completed your pre-assessment, you will receive a letter from our booking office. This letter will provide you with the date of your operation and the location where you will attend before the operation. You will either be admitted to the orthopaedic ward the day before your surgery or you will be asked to attend the surgical day unit on the morning of your planned surgery. Some patients, particularly those who live far away from the hospital, may be placed in the hotel the night before and asked to attend the surgical day unit on the morning of surgery. If you are admitted to the ward the day before your surgery, instructions regarding fasting time and medications will be provided by the nursing staff. If it is planned that you will attend the surgical day unit, including if you are staying in the hotel, please stop eating at midnight the night before your surgery. Please drink a large glass of water or black tea or black coffee at 6am on the day of your surgery. This will help to ensure that you do not become too dehydrated. Following this, please do not have anything else to drink until you receive further instructions on the surgical day unit. You will receive written instructions from your pre-assessment nurse or a member of the anaesthetic team which of your regular medications you should take on the morning of surgery prior to attending the surgical day unit. Your anaesthetist will see you either on the ward the evening before your operation, if you are being admitted the day before, or on the day of your operation in the surgical day unit. About two hours before your operation, you will receive a variety of different medications prescribed by your anaesthetist and each medication has a specific role in preparing you for theatre. This is what is known as a pre-med and may consist of a tablet to help you relax, various types of painkiller, a tablet to reduce gastric acid and an anaesthetic cream to numb the skin on the back of your hands to improve comfort on insertion of the intravenous cannula. About half an hour before your operation, you will be transferred to the pre-operative area. Here the nurse will use a checklist to ensure that everything is ready for you to proceed to theatre. On your arrival in the anaesthetic room, your anaesthetist will insert the intravenous cannula for the purpose of giving essential drugs and fluids during the operation. Following this, in the vast majority of cases, we usually perform what is known as a spinal anaesthetic. However, for some patients, this type of anaesthetic may not be considered appropriate for a variety of reasons. There are certain conditions which may mean that it is less safe to perform the surgery using a spinal or epidural. This will be discussed with you by the anaesthetist who may suggest that a general anaesthetic is used instead. If this is the case for you, your anaesthetist will discuss with you the risks and benefits of a general anaesthetic as they relate to you and this will happen when they come to see you before the operation. A spinal anaesthetic consists of a single one-off injection in between the bones and the centre of your lower back using a very fine needle. This injection of local anaesthetic blocks the nerve supplying the lower half of your body. You can greatly assist us in the procedure of administering the spinal anaesthetic by adopting the best position possible and you will be supported in doing so by the anaesthetic assistant. If you don't mind, I just need to feel your hips now, so it's a bit pushing at the sides first of all, I'm sorry if it's a bit uncomfortable. Adopting this optimal position opens up the spaces in your spinal column and can make the injection much more straightforward for your anaesthetist. Immediately after this injection, you will experience a warm, tingling sensation in your legs. This will develop to produce numbness and leg muscle weakness from your waist down, lasting for approximately 4 to 6 hours. The injection itself is well tolerated by the majority of patients and most are only aware of a feeling of mild pressure in their back. Following the injection, after the anaesthetist has completed the various checks to ensure that the spinal anaesthetic has achieved a satisfactory effect, preparations will be made to transfer you to the operating theatre. 
If you're having a knee replacement operation, your anaesthetist may discuss with you the possibility of having an additional local anaesthetic injection. This is the so-called Hunter Canal or Adductor Canal block. This local anaesthetic block is performed using ultrasound guidance. It consists of an injection of local anaesthetic into the middle of your thigh in your operative leg. This nerve block should give you prolonged pain relief after the operation and may enable you to recover more quickly. This image shows the area of spread of the injected local anaesthetic. At the time of making the initial injection, the anaesthetist may also insert a plastic tube, which allows the possibility of giving additional top-up injections in the day following the operation. The Hunter Canal block may be carried out before or after any other form of anaesthesia, such as a spinal anaesthetic or a general anaesthetic is undertaken. Your anaesthetist will discuss with you the plan for your individual care. You will be moved through to the theatre on the trolley and then transferred across onto the operating table. At this point, the theatre will be a hive of activity, with the theatre team busily attending to their various roles. We will make sure that you are lying in a comfortable position and start to give you sedation, as previously discussed and agreed with you. The choice of being awake or asleep during your operation is one that your anaesthetist will discuss with you when you meet them before the operation. The majority of our patients express the wish to be asleep during the operation itself. The anaesthetic team will be present at all times to monitor you and keep you safe during the operation and can adjust the level of your sedation as appropriate. Some patients may prefer to stay awake for their operation and there is the option to watch your operation as it happens on a monitor. If you're having a knee joint replacement operation, the surgeon will inject local anaesthetic in and around your knee joint in order to provide some pain relief when the spinal anaesthetic wears off. The surgeon will also leave a small tube in the knee joint which enables more local anaesthetic to be continuously infused through a small elastic balloon-like device over the following 24 hours. The aim is to provide pain relief directly to the site of operation in the knee joint and this may reduce your need for additional painkillers and therefore lessen side effects. After your operation, you will be transferred to the theatre recovery area where you will remain for about 30 minutes before finally returning to the ward. The staff will check that you are comfortable and all your vital signs are stable following your operation. We prefer to use an enhanced recovery approach here at the Golden Jubilee National Hospital. This is a package of care based on the latest evidence and is aimed at trying to get you mobilised with the physiotherapy team as soon as possible after the effects of your spinal anaesthetic have worn off and normal movement and sensation has returned. Ultimately, the object of this approach is to undertake all measures to hasten your recovery from the operation, which in turn will result in an earlier discharge home from hospital. It is normal, particularly after knee surgery, to have a degree of pain. This is to be expected and does not mean that something has gone wrong or that the operation has not been a success. If the pain is hindering your ability to undertake physiotherapy to progress your recovery or interfering with your sleep at night, then it is important to ask for extra painkillers. You should consider good pain relief as essential in helping you to meet the targets and speed on your recovery following the operation. We are very fortunate here in the Golden Jubilee National Hospital to have a well-resourced acute pain service. This pain management service is delivered by a group of highly trained nursing staff who work as a team with the consultant anaesthetist and in partnership with the ward nursing staff. In the days following your operation you will be closely followed up by a member of the acute pain service nursing staff. As you begin to recover the pain team will work closely with you and make alterations to your pain relief depending on your progress. The aim is to reduce the strong painkillers as soon as is feasible, to minimise exposure to side effects. This means that we are able to deliver a highly individualised approach to your care to help support your recovery. In 2014, the Golden Jubilee National Hospital operated on 2,826 patients having hip or knee joint surgery. Of these, 2,737 patients had their joint replacements done under spinal anaesthetic. This constitutes 97% of all joint replacements. What are the advantages of having these types of operation done under a spinal anaesthetic? 
A spinal anaesthetic gives you a much quicker recovery than a general anaesthetic. There is less risk of a chest infection after surgery. There is less effect on lungs and the breathing. It provides excellent pain relief immediately after surgery. There is less nausea and vomiting after the anaesthetic. You can eat and drink almost straight away after surgery. There is less risk of becoming confused after the operation, especially if you are an older person. There is evidence of less blood loss and also less risk of blood clots. What are the potential side effects of a spinal anaesthetic? Very common and common side effects. Numbness and leg weakness. After the spinal injection, you will experience numbness from the waist down and eventually be unable to move your legs. This is the desired clinical effect. This effect normally affects both legs equally. The operation itself lasts about one hour, but these effects of the spinal injection will last for around four to six hours. Retention of urine. Some patients may experience a delay in their ability to pass urine after the operation until the effects of the spinal injection have completely worn off. If you're unable to pass urine and this results in discomfort, we may be required to insert a urinary catheter. However, it should be stressed that this is only necessary in a very small number of patients. Temporary drop in blood pressure. This can occur soon after the spinal anaesthetic is administered. The anaesthetic team will be present looking after you at this time and can immediately take appropriate action. If you feel dizzy or nauseated following the spinal anaesthetic, please let the staff know since this may be a sign of an abrupt fall in blood pressure. Pain or unusual sensations during the injection of the spinal anaesthetic. In the vast majority of cases, the administration of a spinal injection is very well tolerated and a relatively painless procedure. If you experience pain or any unpleasant sensation during the procedure, please let the anaesthetist know immediately and they will make the necessary adjustments. Failure. In a very small number of patients, the anaesthetist may be unable to successfully administer a spinal injection for the operation. If this happens, then the anaesthetist will discuss with you their planned alternative technique to provide anaesthesia for your operation. Headache. There is the risk of experiencing a specific type of headache after having a spinal anaesthetic. This type of headache is known as a postural puncture headache, with symptoms being worse on sitting or standing up and improving on lying flat. The headache may be associated with dizziness, nausea and sensitivity to light with intolerance to bright lights. The risk of this is usually quoted as around 1% or 1 in 100 patients. In the Golden Jubilee National Hospital in 2014, our rate of postural puncture headache was 0.6% or approximately 1 in 200 patients. We recognise that suffering from headaches after an operation is very common. The majority of headaches are due to a variety of factors such as dehydration, feeling anxious or, if you drink a lot of caffeinated drinks, as symptoms of caffeine withdrawal. If you do experience a headache in the day or two after your operation, please mention this to the nursing staff in the ward. Rare and very rare complications. Nerve damage. This is a rare complication of spinal anaesthesia. Temporary loss of sensation, pins and needles and sometimes muscle weakness may last for a few days or even weeks, but almost all of these make a full recovery in time. Permanent nerve damage is very rare, approximately 1 in 50,000 spinals. It has about the same chance of occurring as major complications of having a general anaesthetic. Infection. This is a very rare complication of spinal anaesthetic. Around the time of administering the spinal anaesthetic, the anaesthetist will take all precautions to ensure that the procedure is undertaken in such a manner as to reduce the risk of infective complications to a minimum. Bleeding. Bleeding into the area surrounding the spinal cord is potentially serious, but a very rare complication of spinal or epidural injection. Patients taking blood thinning medications are at increased risk of this complication. However, on your visit to the pre-operative assessment clinic, 
you will receive written instructions regarding when to stop these medications before operation. This measure will reduce the risk of those affected to that approaching the risk of the general population. What are the advantages of having a Hunter Canal Block? The aim of the nerve block is to provide you with prolonged pain relief following your operation and reduces the need for strong painkillers and therefore limits their associated side effects. Because of where the local anaesthetic is placed, the injection should result in little or no weakness to the thigh muscles and this enables you to start your physiotherapy earlier. Overall, this may help you to recover quicker. What are the potential side effects of having a Hunter Canal Block? Common side effects. Numbness and muscle weakness of your operated leg. This is a common side effect. This effect will gradually disappear when the local anaesthetic wears off. Your physiotherapist will assess how stable you are on your feet. If there is any sign of weakness, the physiotherapist may put on a temporary splint on your leg to help achieve early mobilisation. You may experience a patch of numbness from your knee down the inside of your leg to your ankle. This may last for up to 24 hours and will return to normal as the local anaesthetic wears off. Pain or unusual sensations during the injection of the local anaesthetic. The Hunter Canal Block should be a fairly painless procedure. Please let your anaesthetist know immediately if you feel any pain or unpleasant sensations during the injection. The anaesthetist will stop immediately and make the appropriate adjustments. Failure. If the Hunter Canal Block is unsuccessful, the acute pain service will review and provide you with alternative pain relief. One of the suggestions may include repeating the block the following day. Rare complications and very rare complications. Hematoma. The nerves running in the Hunter Canal are positioned in close proximity to the blood vessels. This is why the anaesthetist will use an ultrasound machine. In addition, if you are taking blood thinning medications, you should follow the advice given in the pre-assessment clinic. These two measures should reduce the likelihood of developing a bruise or some bleeding at the injection site. Infection. This is a rare complication. Your anaesthetist will undertake the same precautions as for a spinal anaesthetic to reduce the risk of infection at the injection site. Nerve damage. This is a very rare complication of a Hunter Canal Block. Temporary loss of sensation, pins and needles and sometimes muscle weakness in the area in which the Hunter Canal Block supplies may last for a few days or even weeks, but almost all make a full recovery. Permanent nerve damage after a peripheral nerve block is estimated to be around 1 in 2,000 to 1 in 5,000. We hope that you have found this short film informative and reassuring. The content of this film has been inspired by many conversations with our patients and it contains information relating to the questions that are most frequently asked. Our primary concerns are your safety and comfort and to support you in making a rapid recovery. If you have any further questions, these can be discussed in person with an anaesthetist in the outpatient clinic or, alternatively, with your anaesthetist looking after you for your surgery. If you wish more written information, please go to the Royal College of Anaesthetists website. Thanks again for taking the time to view this film. We always welcome your feedback since this allows us to make improvements in both the information we provide and the way we deliver care to our patients in the future. If you have any comments in relation to this film or about any of the information and material received, please don't hesitate to let us know. You can do so by speaking to any member of staff or by dropping us a letter or an email. The entire team wish you a safe and successful journey through your surgery and we are very much looking forward to welcoming you here at the Golden Jubilee National Hospital.